everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Raiders Talk. I feel like I've been talking about this for like forever and I finally sat down I'm like, you're literally gonna have to do this today, so yeah. So I'm excited, it's like a new journey, chapter, whatever, but um, yeah, today is gonna be the first episode of Raiders Talk and if you haven't watched my other videos, basically Raiders Talk is just gonna be like an advice column, like behind the scenes, and just yeah, everything about the Braden business yeah so that's what it's gonna be about so for the very first video i thought it would literally be perfect if i do things i wish i knew before sorry i'm just gonna cross my leg i'm trying to get comfortable here yeah so it's gonna be very comfortable very zen vibe and whatnot but yeah so on today's episode i'm gonna be talking about five things i wish i knew before i started doing hair because i know some of you don't like to classify as a business but doing hair it is a business and there are some things that like had i known prior I just feel like it would have saved me so much time, so much heartache, so much tears, because, boy, were there some tears, but yeah. So, just gonna get on my phone here, and then I'm gonna start talking about some of the topics that I had in mind. So, for the very first one, and this is something that, like, I'm still learning myself, and it's like a lot of these things, honestly, I'm still learning myself, they're like a daily struggle. So, yeah, but the very first thing that I should, could say is, don't create your client's budget and don't lowball yourself. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made and like two years later into the hair business and I felt like I could be charging more. However, based on where I started, I can't jump from like the price that I started at to another price. So that's one thing that I'll say. Be aware of what you are and don't charge like $500 for Nautilus. If you feel like in your heart of hearts like your work is being like, hundred dollars like I mean like be realistic with where like your skill level set is and then create your prices but with that being said look at the prices of the people that are braiding around here just in general on Instagram there's so many braiders and just check their prices and see their skill set and look at your skill set and kind of gauge where you should be so like for me for reference when I started doing box braids I started at sixty dollars which I feel like with the skill set that I had then, although I wasn't as knowledgeable as I am now, I felt like that was pretty low. So again, I can't go from 60 to like $100 in like a year. Like I have to do it like progressively. So that part kind of sucks. That's one thing that I want to say to keep it in mind definitely. And like I said, don't create your client's budget. I This is something that I've learned recently and I talked to my sister about this too because she has a business. I often tell them like, oh my gosh, what if this is like too much? Like I feel bad charging sometimes. And I'm like, so for instance, I started doing overtime over the summer when I wasn't in school. And I was like, oh my gosh, are people gonna pay the overtime fee? I thought it was $30, I was like, it's too much. I'm like, people are gonna think I'm snotty. They're not gonna support me anymore. They're gonna think it's too much money. And lo and behold, like I had people that bugged for that entire month of August for all the overtime time. And there were people that were willing to pay more and there were people that paid more. So that's one thing that I want to keep in mind. And had I lowballed myself and charged maybe like $20, yeah, would I have still got the booking? But that's like an extra $10 that I got for the four Tuesdays that I did. And that's an extra $40 right there. So, yeah, so don't create your client's budget. Again, be realistic of where your skill set level is, but don't lowball yourself and don't create your client's budget. Create the price that you feel like your, worth, your work is worth and then throw it out there. And then if they feel like they want to pay that much, they'll pay. And like, my dad always says this thing. To some of us, things are like expensive. But whoever wants it and wants that service and feel like your work is worth that much, they will pay that happily and more. So don't move by yourself. And yeah, that's one of like the main advice that I wish I got when I first started. So yeah, charge what you're worth and throw it out there and whoever's meant for you will come to you. And on to number two. This is something that I am learning till today. And when I'll stop learning, I don't think so. Um, it's okay not to be perfect. And I know this sounds very like, she's like, Ugh, I get it. But like, I took it like, I don't know if anybody's like me. I feel like somebody's gonna resonate with this out there. But like, if I try to envision a style and it didn't come out the way I wanted, and like I could tell the client is not that big of a fan of it and I'm not very proud of my work. And this is when I started where I'm still learning about the hair. I took that so personally and I was like, oh my gosh, like it's the end of my career. I'm going to cry. I feel like they wasted their money. Yeah, I'm very dramatic that way. But like, 
I just felt so bad because one of my big things is I never want someone to come to me and feel like they wasted their money. So like I always felt bad and like I said, you're just starting out. You're not gonna get, your braids aren't gonna be tight the first time. Like there's gonna be mistakes. It's gonna happen. You just have to keep practicing and keep practicing. And over time, before you know it, you just look back at pictures and you're like, wait a minute. My work has improved. Like I remember looking back at my work and I was like, oh, my braids did get better and you don't even realize it. It's just the more you do it, then like the speed comes in. Then you get quicker with your braids. Your braids get tighter. You get done quicker. Like they're neater and it's just like, wow, I've changed. So in the beginning when you're starting, it's okay not to be perfect. You just have to practice, practice, practice. And then, yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. That's one thing that I wish, I like, I, I feel like somebody's as dramatic as me out there. So if you are, let me down, let me know down below. But yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, yeah, it sucks that the style that you wanted didn't come out as you wanted, but like, it's not the end of the world. Keep practicing and you get it right. And if you feel more comfortable practicing on someone and not charging, then do that till you get your skills to where you're like comfortable charging what you're worth. So yeah, that's definitely something. And know your limits as well. Like I said, know where you are in your skill set. Going back to the first point, know back where you you are on your skill set to know what you're going to charge and also know your limits as well. I remember when I first started, I was just so eager to get every client in my chair. So like everybody that wanted to get their hair done, it was yes. It was yes, 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 yes. I did not care if I had school, if I was busy, it was just yes. So like I wanted to do everybody to gain the experience and although that's helpful for me in the long run and I see the benefit now. There were definitely times where like I was stressed and I was exhausted and I wish I had said no to a few of them just so like I can have a peace of mind and I can rest because if I'm saying yes to everybody and I'm so tired by let's say I take like three clients in a day by that like third client if I'm so tired I know damn well in my heart of heart the effort and the energy that I put into the first and possibly the second the third client is not going to get it. So you don't want that client to come and they're getting like less work than what you than what you normally do. So that's one thing. So it's okay to say no. I know sometimes you're so eager to get clientele and like but clientele. But sometimes it's okay to say no. There are literally only 24 hours in the day. You can only do someone's hair, like you can only do so many people's hair in a day. So like don't stress yourself to the limit where like you're literally on your breaking point where you can't do anything anymore. And then a negative aspect to that so let's say you do the third person for the day and you're tired they're all box braids and what like five six hours each depending on if you're starting in the time by the time you get to that third person if they don't like their hair they won't they might not come back to you and then now instead of saying no and maybe scheduling for another day and possibly keeping her now you've lost her and possibly people that she will recommend to you so it's okay to know your limits and say no when you are overbooked to the maximum and reschedule for another day because you don't want to be so tired that like you're not even putting out your best work and people are like oh my braids like you don't want people contacting you like a week or two late like oh you did my braids so nice last time what happened this time like that's so awkward and it's like so uncomfortable like yeah you don't want that so try to avoid that as much as possible number three is invest in yourself and take classes it's not it's okay if you like practice by yourself but you're still not getting it and you're missing some steps but I will say this before you invest in a class go to YouTube YouTube is free I have a bunch of videos other braiders have a bunch of videos watch as much as you can get and after you feel like you've exhausted all those resources and you're still not getting what you want look for a, like a skilled braid that knows what they want to do that knows like their field and knows what they're doing and can teach you properly when, like you can't go wrong with better on yourself and invest in yourself like there's literally no downside to it you're always gonna win and the only way you can win and I'm gonna talk about this now just because someone can braid doesn't mean they can teach so don't be so I guess into the hype of who you get to teach because not everybody knows some people might know how to do something but when it comes to teaching they might not be very they might not be the best and you're looking at it and you're like wait a minute but like your work is beautiful but what you're teaching me is not the same just because you know something doesn't mean you can teach it so make sure like you read reviews on artists on artists like that braid and make sure like they know what they're doing and they know how to teach properly someone that i took a classroom was braided rebel 
that that woman literally takes all her knowledge and puts it into you and just like gives every single question you have she was someone that i took a class with every single question that i had she answered it like those little like mistakes that i was like how do i fix this that like youtube wasn't telling me she answered all of them so like make sure that you go to someone that like you get the best knowledge that you can possibly get from them not just because they can do it but also make sure that they can teach it so and number four set your standards early on and i mean this in the sense of what you're going to tolerate what you're not going to tolerate and this comes to i feel like all these topics i'm still going to go in depth into them like prices and policies because i know policies is like a big deal and like braiders get a lot of like shame for it so if you want me to make a video on like policies and how they work from a braider's perspective from a braider's perspective let me know down below and i'll be happy to film that video but yeah so set your standards early on and what you're going to tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate for me i'm very big on time and i feel like a lot of braiders are this way as well too you have a client for 9 a.m let's say they end at 2 p.m and maybe your next client is maybe like 2 30 or 3 o'clock if that your morning client runs late you're gonna be like you're gonna have to push back your schedule then your afternoon client you're gonna have to push them back and it's just a whole mess so make sure yeah so like i was saying set your standards early on your policies let it be known what you are and what you stand for you don't want to have that label of being like the late breaker like that's like we see on instagram all the time people talk about it. you don't want to have that breaker you don't want to be that person that's like oh she's always late oh maybe her area is dirty or maybe this like you want to be known as like she's good and i say this a lot when i want people to come to me i never want people to say oh she's good but like i feel like there should be no but after when people are talking about you and your work it should be like oh my gosh she's good her customer service is good this is good this is good like it should just be like this is good all around now oh she's really good her work is good but her area is dirty oh she's good but she's a little late oh she's good but she talks too much on the phone so stuff like that, like you want to avoid that as much as possible. So set your standards on and who you will be. And that reputation will like stick for you forever. Like people will know her work is good. Customer service is good. Like she's good on time, good cares for her client. It's not just about the money and whatnot. And like that will go so far. So people will know who you are. And it's just amazing. So yeah. And then this is the last and final point. And it kind of ties into the fourth one, but be respectful but not a doormat and this is something that again i'm still learning a lot of these things but it's okay we're progressing and we're making change so that's all that matters but um be respectful but don't be a doormat for me personally and i'll share a lot of my experiences because i feel like i'm a dramatic queen like my family knows like it's okay but um yeah so be respectful but not a doormat and i say this to say when you tell someone a certain time let them know, okay, that time is from you. don't have to be rude, like, oh my gosh, if you don't be here at this time, your appointment is canceled, like, I hate you, yada, 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 like, going on a rant on Instagram or whatever. But at the same time, let them know, okay, please be on my time, because this is what happens when you're late. You don't even have to explain it further like that. But it's like, be on time, or if not, there's going to be a late fee. Be respectful to your clients. You don't want to be that person where it's like, I don't know like you don't want to be that person that's always like venting about people and that's gonna make people feel uncomfortable like I don't know I mean to each his own with how you want to run your business but personally for me when I see people constantly venting about like clients and what they do like trust me people are gonna frustrate you that's that's literally every aspect of life it's not just in hair and business and whatnot but you don't want to be that person where it's like you're always like venting about people because that's going to make your clients feel a little around because they're like oh, damn is she talking about me again or something like that like again being labeled you don't want to be labeled like the negative nancy of like the business like that's not a good look so yeah be respectful but don't be a doormat when you set a time let people know they have to meet that time of course if you feel nice in your heart and you want to tolerate them for maybe like 10 15 minutes and it works with your schedule and works with possibly your next client schedule then absolutely go ahead but don't let it be a habit where people feel comfortable where they can show up at any time it's like oh i know her she'll be okay don't do that because like i said if you don't set those standards early on people are going to continue those habits for however many years they come to you and by the time you're like three four years into your business you're like damn i don't want to tolerate this anymore and it's gonna be like oh, why is she switching up now but like if you set the standards early on 
there is no switching up. They know, okay, when Kemi tells me to be here at this time, this is what Kemi means. When Kemi tells me to wash my hair, this, not wash your hair. Anyway, you get my point. But, um, yeah, be respectful, but don't be a doormat. Learn what you will tolerate early on. Be respectful to your clients. Talk to them. Have fun with them. Yeah, it's a service and you're going to get your money at the end of the day, but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't hurt to talk to your clients. I feel like now I'm, ram I'm rambling, but you get my point. Anyway, be respectful, but don't be a doormat. Don't let people set the policies for you. Set your own policies for how you want to run your business, the standard that you want to use for your business. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys learned a lot. Not a lot. It's only like five tips, but like, you get my point. Just to recap really quick, the first one, don't create your client's budget and don't lowball yourself. Number two, it's okay to be perfect, especially if you're just starting out. You're not gonna be perfect. Your stitch braids are not always gonna be tight. Some braids might come, come loose, like, it's normal. You're just starting, so it's okay to be not be perfect. Just keep practicing and over time you'll get it. And don't be so harsh on yourself. And again, know your limits. It's okay to say no if you are work to the max. Don't stress yourself out. Don't cause yourself unnecessary pain to where it's like... Because I feel like if you take so many clients, at some point it doesn't even become... Like, I like hair. I like to do hair. I love it. It's like a joy for me. If you take so many clients, the joy kind of leaves and it almost becomes a task. And you never want to leave your... And you never want to lose your passion for what you're doing all in the name of, oh, I don't want to say no. Oh, I'm trying to get all the money I can. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Number three, it's okay to invest in yourself if you feel like you're not getting it from either YouTube videos or like practicing. It's you never, you can never go wrong by betting on yourself and investing in yourself. Be careful where you invest to make sure that the people that you're investing in, people that you're buying classes from, know what they're doing. They're gonna teach you properly and not just the service of, but like the nitty gritty of it all. Number four, set your standards early on. What you're gonna take, what you're not gonna take, who you want to be as a braider. When people describe you, who do you want them to describe? If that's completely up to you, what you feel like. When I want people to describe me, I want to be like, oh, Kemi, she's a great braider. She's a nice person, very accommodating, talks to me, yada, yada, yada. Anything like that that you want to be, just set your standards on, on who you want to be. You can be a very nice person and still be a no-nonsense person. They don't, I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, you're either a no nonsense person or you're a nice person. You can be a very nice person, but still not take BS. Like, it's not the end of the world. When you don't take BS, you don't have to be rude about it. There's a polite and respectful way to go about it, which goes into my last point, which is be respectful with your clients. Of course, you give respect, you get respect. It's not just a one-way street. So yeah, be respectful, but don't be a doormat. So... Those are my five tips. If you guys have any other questions or like advice, that could be another thing that I can do or maybe like a Q&A of what you want to know more. Again, I've only been doing this for two years. I've learned a lot in those two years and I'm still learning literally every day. So yeah, comment down below what you want me to know. Make sure to follow me on IG. My IG is Mita Hair. And yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And you learned a thing or two. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Oh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>